Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And today I am here with three more games in our Washington Senators season. Um, I have gone ahead and quick played through the date of 6 9 in the season, June 9th. Um, so over that span, we. Um, we played quite a few games, and uh, the last time we checked in with the schedule, we were uh, and the standings. We were 13 and 17, and we are now 16 and 35. So that isn't very good at all. That was a terrible record over that uh, span, something like 3 and 16 or something. So we were horrible. And now we find ourselves at, as I say, 16 and 35. And in real life, the Senators at this point on this date were actually 22 and 29. So the real Senators were actually playing much better than my Senators are. Although I want to say that there were quite a few games in here that I did not personally manage, including... Uh, the games from, I believe it was May, uh, early May, somewhere in early May to right now. So that was a big span of games. So now we find ourselves on at the date of uh, 6-11, I think is, yes, our next game, 6-11. And we will have Johnny Schmitz going up against my Chicago White Sox. Although not my Chicago White Sox. I'm not the manager of the White Sox. I'm the manager of the Senators, but my favorite team is the White Sox. So we're going to have Johnny Schmitz going up against Virgil Trucks in game one. So let's get that underway. Uh, let's see here. We got, all right, we're going to change uh, them to computer. We are human. And uh, we're, we're going to go with that. So... That's letting us know what the conditions of the day are. Welcome to the stadium for today's ball game. And I am going to let the announcer and the sound stay on at some level because it may the sound overall might actually be better. If we do that, I'll turn it down a little bit. But this way you can hear the crowd and you can hear the crack of the bat just like you want to do. So anyway... Virgil Trucks is out there pitching against Eddie Yost, leading off. And he's going to hit a ground ball to the second baseman, Fox. And he, no, he did not. Yeah, all right, the throw beat him. All right, so now we got Ernie Oravets up, and he is going to be out. He's out, grounding out the Fox, or lining out the Fox. And then Pete Runnels is up. And Pete Runnels is going to hit a home run and put us on the board. So we're on the board and Mickey Vernon's up. And Mickey Vernon flies out. So an inning that looked like we were going to get nothing off of trucks, we actually get a run. On a home run by Runnels. So here we go. Minnie Minoso's batting against Schmitz. Schmitz. Uh, gets him to hit into a ground ball. And on the season, you can see uh, Schmitz has a 545 earned run average in 63 innings pitched, allowing 94 hits. Not good at all. And that's going to be a single for Jim Busby. Up comes Walt Dropo. There he is, Walt Dropo. Walt Dropo just went deep and hit a two-run home run that's going to put the White Sox ahead 2-1 here in game one. And that brings up Sherm Lawler. Ground ball. He's going to be out. There's two away. And now Bob Neiman's up and he flies out. So that's going to bring up Roy Seavers to bat against Virgil Trucks here as we bat in the top of the second down 2-1. 
and he strikes out. Carlos Paula is up, and he is going to go deep. Carlos Paula, love it. So we tie the game on a Carlos Paula home run, solo homer, and then Valdivizo comes up, and he's going to fly out. That's two down. And Bruce Edwards is up, the walking man, and the walking man just grounded out to short. So we go to the bottom of the second in a tie game. Schmidt's trying to hold us. Fly ball for George Kell. That brings up Chico Carascal, and he is going to be out. Lines out to Runnels. And Nellie Fox is up. And Nellie Fox is going to be out. Thank you. So we go to the top of the third in game one. Tied up at two still. Johnny Schmidt's batting. And he's going to fly out. One down. We're back at the top of the order with Eddie Yost. And Eddie Yost is going to ground to second. And that brings up Oravets. And Oravets singles. There's a base hit and Runnels up after him and Runnels is out. He had a home run the last time, but not so lucky this time. So we go to the bottom of the third. Still tied at two. Virgil Trucks batting against Schmitz and he's going to fly out to Oravets in center. That brings up Minimanos, so, and he's going to walk. Jim Busby's up, and Jim Busby lines out, or fouls out to the catcher. And that brings up Dropo. Walt Dropo up, and he's going to hit a fly to center, but we got Orvets out there, so that could be trouble. And it looks like it's going to be big trouble. And it does, it clears the bases, and so they got two runs on that. And then a fly ball. But the White Sox get two runs in the bottom of the third, and they take a 4-2 to lead. Which brings up Mickey Vernon, he gets a single. The big problem with this team is they couldn't string hits together. I mean, they had, they had some guys that could hit. But you can't sustain it because, and here we go, double play. Because you've got a string of guys that are not going to get hit after hit after hit. Paula up with two down, and he grounds out. So we go to the bottom of the fourth. Losing four to two. Neiman up, and he gets a catcher card X to Edwards. And he's out. George Kell is up with one down, and he hits a single. Chico Carasquale is going to strike out. That's going to be two down, and up steps Nelly Fox, and he's going to ground out. So Schmitz gets us out of the fourth, but we're still losing four to two with Valdiviso up and striking out. That brings up Bruce Edwards, and Bruce Edwards is going to ground out. And that brings up our man, Johnny Schmitz, and he strikes out. So we're going to the bottom of the fifth. Still losing 4-2. The pitcher is leading off, and he's striking out, and that's what I like to see. Mini Minoso up, and he singles. Mini Minoso's getting on all kinds of ways every time he comes up. Jim Busby up at the plate. He hits a ground ball B, so Busby will now be at first base. Minoso is out at second, and Dropo's up. 
and Dropo strikes out right between two huge hits. That brings up Eddie Yost, top of the order. And he is going to hit a single. Oravets up. And Oravets singles. Nice. We got something going here. I am just going to hold the runners because we need runs. Runnels up. Runnels singles. That might score Yost. Let's see. And Trucks is tired. So it does score a run. So we're now down just 4-3 with runners at the corners. And it looks like they're going to replace Virgil Trucks with Mike Finales. Finales? I don't know. And he hits a ground ball B. And I'm going to try to advance and see what happens. He's out. No, a tie. Yeah, all right. The batter was out, so we did tie the game. Now we got one down, runner at second, Seavers up. And he strikes out. And up steps Carlos Paula. And Carlos Paula is going to be out, but we did tie the game. And Schmitz goes back out there. He's pitching to Lawler. Lawler gets a ground ball. That brings up Bob Neiman. Bob Neiman is going to be out. And that brings up George Kell. And George Kell will be out. So we're back up at the plate, top of the seventh, in a tie game at four with Valdivizo facing Cornell's, or however you pronounce it, and he's going to line out. Bruce Edwards is walking. The walking man is walking. Johnny Schmitz is up, and he strikes out. And Eddie Ose is up with two down, and a man at first, and he hits a two-run home run. See you, Mr. Sunshine, later. And Oravets is up at the plate. And Oravets singles. And that brings up Runnels. And Runnels is out. So we got, uh, we're out of the seventh. And now at the very least, I am going to do a defensive replacement. So we will, um, we will go and put, um, um put in at center field for Oravets. And that's going to be a fly ball left field for one out. We have a 6-4 lead now in the bottom of the seventh. And that's going to be a fly ball. And they're going to pinch hit for Fornells, which is great because I can't pronounce his name. And Burn Stevens will be the batter and he gets a hit. Which gives way to Minoso, who gets on all the time. Now he hits a fly ball to center, but I put Umflit in center, and so it looks like maybe it'll be an out. And it is. So we go to the top of the eighth, and they're bringing in Dixie Howell to pitch to Mickey Vernon. And that's going to be a fly ball. That guy gave up a lot of doubles. He's got two automatics and a one to five. Roy Seavers is up and he doubles. No, he's going to sink. Got a little carried away. Carlos Paula. Paula singles. There's only one out and now we have runners at first and second. I'm going to say hold the runners. And Valdivizo's up. And he, hit, he gets a catcher card axe. That's... Wow, uh, and there is an out. And that brings up Bruce Edwards, and he walks. That's probably going to load the bases, and I will pinch hit for Schmitz. So, we have a righty on the mound. So, of course, no surprise, McDermott, he's always our pinch hitter.
and they're going to bring in somebody else. And they're going to go get Maury Martin. And that is, he just barely misses getting a hit. All right. So let's go get, we got to go get somebody. Going to bring in uh, Clark to pitch. I think that's Webbo Clark. So Webbo Clark is coming into pitch and hopefully he doesn't blow the game for us. There's a strikeout. And I'll take it. Busby's down. Waldropo, who's two for three today, lines out to third base. And that brings up Sherm Lawler. And Sherm Lawler's going to fly out. So we're still holding a good two-run lead with Eddie Yost, the top of the order. And he's going to fly out. Um, flip. The defensive replacement comes in and he walks. That brings up Runnels, who's two for four, and he's going to hit a ground ball back to the pitcher. And he's a one, and they get a double play. Out. I'm going to see if Webbo can get through this inning. Uh, maybe not. Bob Neiman hits a single. That brings up George Kell, and George Kell gets a line out. That doesn't look much like a line out, but that's what it says on the card. Carasqual is batting, and Carasqual is going to hit a two-run homer and tie the game off Webbo. Thank you, Mr. Webbo Clark. All right. That wasn't good. Nelly Fox, he gets out. Fly ball. We could have used that just before this. And uh, now Maury Martin, he'll probably pinch hit for him, and he does with Ron Jackson. Probably the wrong Ron Jackson, but um, it's according to the photo, but we'll take it. So now they bring in Bob Keegan to pitch, and he's going to pitch against Mickey Vernon, and we are now losing. No, we're not losing. We're tied. Sure, but we might as well be. Seavers is up. Seavers is going to hit a ground ball. Couldn't hang on. I can't believe I could not hang on to that lead. Carlos Paul is up. And Carlos Paul is going to hit a triple. Well, I'll take a triple. I mean, the next guy probably isn't going to be very reliable for getting a base hit. And it's Valdivizo. And he walks. Or does he? Yes, he does. And now Bruce Edwards is up, and he always walks. And now I'm, I'm going to pinch hit anyway because I'm not sending Webbo Clark out there again. That's for sure. So Keegan is a righty who's a 5L. Ah, uh, man. I mean, the problem with this team is that all of the pinch hitters, our possible pinch hitters, are terrible. I guess I'm going to pinch hit growth just because I don't have any good choices. And he strikes out. All right. We're going to bring in Abernathy to pitch. And he's going to pitch to Minoso, and he gets a single. Busby is up. And Busby's going to hit a fly ball. Dropo, Walt Dropo hits a single. Hopefully that's not a uh, too advancing base single. Throw for the lead runner. And we didn't get him. And that's going to be a ground ball to third base B. And that holds the runner, so there's two down. And Neiman up. And Neiman flies out. 
Key fly out gets Abernathy out of the inning. And we are going to the top of the 11th. And with the top of the order. And he gets a single. Eddie Yost gets a single to greet Keegan. Um foots up. And um foot strikes out. That brings up Runnels, and Runnels is going to hit into a double play, and we're out of the 11th inning. We go to the bottom of the 11th, George Kell up, and he hits a fly ball to center, where we now have Umflit, luckily, and so that's an out. Chico Carasqual pops out. And now Nellie Fox is up, and Nellie Fox is out. So Abernathy, since coming on, has pitched great. Well, all right, I won't say great. He almost allowed a run last inning. But we got Mickey Vernon up in the top of the 12th. And he is going to hit a single. Brings up Seavers. Seavers is going to hit a fly ball. Up steps Carlos Paula. Paula is going to be lining out. So there's two down. And that brings up Valdiviso. And Valdiviso is going to strike out. And now Keegan is going to face... No, he's not. They're going to pinch hit for Keegan with Bob Kennedy. is going to end the game with a home run off of Abernathy. Everybody goes home. We go home unhappy. All right. Really, we go back to our hotel room. So the White Sox win on a pinch hit home run by Bob Kennedy. And here's the box score. Here's what that looks like. You got Schmitz going seven, giving up two earned runs, four runs total on six hits and a walk. Webb O'Clark going two, giving up two runs. And Abernathy going two and giving up one run and getting a loss. So that will take us to game two. That depressing result takes us to game two. Where we have Stone going up against Bird. And I will go with that lineup. That's the daily Welcome to the stadium for today. The daily conditions that we're facing. And uh, Harry Bird out there on the mound against Eddie Yost. See if we can even it up. And it's a leadoff home run by Eddie Yost. Love it. Gotta say, I love it. Oravets is up. And Oravets is going to hit a ground ball to short. That's Karasqual who should make the play. And he does. And that brings up Pete Runnels. And Pete Runnels singles. So we got one down, man at first. We already have a run in on a home run by Yost. And Mickey Vernon up. And Mickey Vernon's going to hit a home run, two-run homer. Now let's hope we can hold on to this lead. And Roy Seavers is up. And he's out. That's going to be the second out. That's just the second out. And we're up 3 nothing, and then Carlos Paula strikes him. But we're taking a 3 nothing lead to the bottom of the first against Chicago, and Minnie Minoso is facing Dean Stone. And that is going to be an out. Jim Busby up. Jim Busby with a single, though. So they got a man on. Well, Dropo is up. Walt Dropo is out. He lines out. And that brings up Sherm Lawler. And Sherm Lawler is striking out. 
and we hold the White Sox to nothing in the first, unlike what we did in the first in the first inning of the last game where we allowed them two runs. Well, the Vizo is up and he's going to fly out. So that was yeah, that first game was a heartbreaking loss by the score of seven to six in thirteen innings. And Bruce Edwards is up. Bruce Edwards is out. And that brings up Dean Stone. You know what? I think this is going to be the only other game that I play. I'm not going to play game three of the series because we went into extras in the first game. So I will quick play the third game of the series against Chicago. And then the next time we have a game, whoa, there's a home. No, it's not. It's a fly ball. Nice. So Stone manages to keep that ball in the park. And there is one down, George Kell walking. And Karasqual is up with one out. That's going to be a fly ball. And that brings up um, Nellie Fox. And Nellie Fox is going to line out to second. So, Eddie Yost, top of the order for us, top of the third inning. We're up 3 nothing. Ground ball to shortstop. That's Karasquale. And he's out. Oravets is up. Oravets with a single. That brings up the 311 hitting Pete Runnels, who pops out. And that will give way to Mickey Vernon, who's hitting 343 for us on the year with 10 home runs, and he walks. So there's two aboard with two down, and Seavers, who's hitting 237. Not quite as impressive, but he does get a single. Let's see if that scores a run. It does not. It loads the bases for Carlos Paula. But Carlos Paula might hit a home run, but it's going to be a triple even if he doesn't. It's a triple. It's a base bases clearing triple with him 90 feet away and Valdiviso up, and he's going to be out for the third out. But we get three more runs. Can't, you know, you can't shake a stick at that. Harry Bird is batting against Stone, and he's going to fly out. And that brings up Minnie Minoso, and he strikes out. And that brings up Jim Busby, and Jim Busby hits a single. Stone also, I want to point out, Stone's pitching pretty well here. Waldropo up. I'm just going to hold on to the ball. And Dropo grounds out. So, we are going to the top of the fourth, up 6-0, with Bruce Edwards striking out for the first out. Dean Stone up, and he's pitching great, so we're going to obviously keep him in. And Eddie Yost. And Eddie Yost hits a ground ball to second. That's Nellie Fox. Expect that. No, he boots it. Fox boots it. And that brings up Oravets. And Oravets singles. I'm going to send the runner just to, you know, do it. And now we got runners at second and third, and Pete Runnels up with two down. And he hits a ground ball back to the pitcher who's a three, and he makes the play. So we don't get any more runs. And, uh, yeah, Sherman Lawler up, and that's going to be a ground ball. One away. Bob Neiman up. And he hits a ground ball to first. That's Mickey Vernon. He's a two. And Mickey Vernon, what happened there? He, he got an error. George Kell 
gets a single, now all of a sudden Stone's falling apart on us. That's going to be a line out though for Chico Carasqual. So there's two down here in the fourth. And that brings up Nellie Fox. And Nellie Fox is out. So Stone does manage to get out of that inning. And that brings up Mickey Vernon, the 343, hitting Mickey Vernon with a double. I'll take that for sure. In fact, we may actually even sacrifice with uh, Seavers up, and I think that's actually a great idea. And that's an out. Yes. No! They threw, they got the lead runner. God. All right, Carlos Paul is up, and he walks. So we would have had a real rally going here. Instead, we got one down with runners at first and second in Valdebizo at the plate. But he gets a hit. I'm going to send the lead runner. I'm going to send the trailing runner. I'm just all about sending everybody. But he was thrown out. So... I'm making some terrible decisions right here that could be costing us. That's a ground ball to second, probably going to be an out. No, it's in the dirt. So on an air, we do get the seventh run finally. And Dean Stone at the plate. But we could have had like eight or nine runs total instead of seven. Um, yeah, I was going to, I'm thinking of making a defensive replacement for Oravets again, but I'm going to wait on that. Rivera is pinch hitting, and he gets a double. Because we are up by seven runs, so. And we might need Oravets' bat at least one more time. It might come in handy. But Busby, or Stone, has put two guys on with no outs, and then Busby lines out. So there is one away with runners at first and second. Here in the fifth, Walt Gropo up, and he hits into a ground ball, thankfully. So we go to the top of the sixth. And they're going to bring in Bob Keegan. Bob Keegan's got a lot of work for the White Sox in this series. And that's going to, Eddie Os is going to greet him with a single. That brings up Oravets. And see, I knew Oravets would come in handy one more time. That's a single. I'm just going to hold the runners. Runnels is up. And Runnels hits a ground ball second base. C. that'll move the runners to second and third, which is what I would have done if I had sacrificed. Or hopefully that would have happened. But anyway, Mickey Vernon's up. And he's going to hit a single. So that'll drive in at least a run, maybe two. I'm going to hold the runners this time. Now I don't think at this point we even have to bring um, Umflit in as a defensive replacement for Oravets because it's just getting way out of control. And that's going to be a single that's going to knock in at least a run and maybe two. And it does knock in two. We're up 10 nothing. And that's another single that's going to knock in another run. So now we're up 11 nothing, And Bruce Edwards is up, and he's going to strike out. And Dean Stone up with two down, and he makes the third out. But we now, we got four runs in the sixth, and we're now up 11 nothing. Sherm Lawler at the plate. He walks. I mean, I'm sure Dean Stone would like me to put in a defensive replacement because he would like to keep that ERA nice like it is at 368. George Kell is up. Ground ball to second. That's Runnels. And he's out. And that brings up... Oh, okay, yeah, we're up now. So we're up in the top of the seventh. And we're winning 11 nothing. and Eddie Yost is up, and he hits a ground ball to the pitcher. He's out. Oravets is 3 for 4, and yes, he's 3 for 5. Probably will replace him defensively, though, because um, there's no reason not to. Ground ball to Karasquale, and he's 
No, that's a two base air by Karis Glow. So Mickey Vernon's up, hitting uh, now 349 on the year against uh, Keegan with the 658 earned run average. That's going to be a fly ball for the third out, though. And, uh, yeah. Now I am going to make the change to put Umflet in center. And Stone, that's going to be a whole oh no, it's going to be a fly ball. Karasquall. Almost had himself a home run. Could have, but he didn't. Fly ball deep to the wall and left. And that's an out. Nellie Fox is up. And Nellie Fox is going to hit it to right. That's Paula, so it's going to be... They're going to probably kick it around the outfield a little bit. No! It was an out! Unbelievable! And Keegan is up. And Keegan is going to hit a double. Bob Keegan gets a double off of Dean Stone. Minnie Minoso up. And Minnie Minoso hits a single. Maybe they score a run on that. Maybe not. They don't. Busby's up. And Busby pops out. So we go to the top of the eighth. Still winning 11 nothing. Dean Stone pitching a gem on top of having a great offense for this particular game. That's going to be a ground out to Karasquall, maybe. And he is out. Carlos Paula, who's for two for three today, and hitting 317 on the season, I would never have guessed. It's a fly ball to right, and that's Neiman. He's a five. But he makes the play, and Valdiviso, who's hitting 189 on the year, pops out but he's out there mainly for his glove. We go to the bottom of the eighth. And that's going to be a walk to Dropo. Sherm Lawler is up, and he is going to hit a home run, probably. Maybe not. He's got it. So, no, he didn't. So, there's one down, and that brings up uh, Neiman, who hits a fly ball to Umflit. And that's an out. And George Kell is up, and he's going to ground out. So, we go to the top of the ninth. We're winning 11 nothing. Bruce Edwards up. Catcher card X. Out. Dean Stone is up. That's going to be a ground ball to the pitcher. And Dean Stone gets on by an error. And Eddie Yost is up. And Eddie Yost walks. And Umflit is up. And even Umflit, man, that guy, I mean, he's hitting 286 on the year. And Keegan, of course, is tired with the bases loaded and one out. And they bring in Fornell, Fornia, Fornells again, the guy I can't pronounce his name. And then we rip it. Where were all these runs last game? I mean, we could have used half of these runs last game and half this game, and we would be 2-0 and in this these two games. Vernon is up, and he singles in another run. We're ahead 15-0 now. That brings up Seavers, and Seavers flies out. And that brings up our man, Paula, Carlos Paula. He fouls out, and that's it. We go to the bottom of the night. Uh, White Sox only need 15 runs, and I doubt they're going to get it, although they do get one right here where Chico Carasquale hits a home run, goes deep to left. So that brings up Nelly Fox. And he's out, one away. And that brings up Fornells, and they're going to pinch hit. 
Last Moss for him. That's a ground ball to short. And he boots it. Keeps him going. There's only one out. Man on and Minoso up. But he's going to hit into a ground ball double play to Yost. And that's going to finish the game. So we split the, the uh, first two games of this series with the White Sox. And as I say, I had intended to play the third game. But the first one went into extra innings. So I don't want the recording to be too long. So we're just going to quick play the last game against the White Sox. When I do my next game, I will update you on what happened in that or on any number of games that I might play before the next one that I televise. But that does make us 17 and 36 on the year. And uh, if we go to the league stats, we are in dead last, which was not unexpected. And two and a half games behind Baltimore, who is 21 and 35. And Chicago is a surprising 24 and 26. But anyway, that's going to be it for me. Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.